sciences to a brand new episode of the wonderful subject of life science. If you have been following the series, we are looking at molecules of life. We're looking at biochemistry, all these words that we use to explain the foods that we need to eat to make our bodies work and to build our bodies and to make sure that everything is working properly. The last couple of sections that we've looked at, we've looked at inorganic nutrients, all right, where we looked at minerals and we looked at water. We've looked at organic nutrients. The first one we looked at was carbohydrates. Then we looked at proteins and enzymes. And today's lesson, we're going to look at the last of the series. It's going to be lipids and vitamins. Okay, so remember molecules of life, biochemistry. We're looking at organic compounds. And today we're going to look at right, vitamins and lipids. I've put a question on the board over here. And this is actually quite an interesting question. And it is, fats are really, really good for us but they're also very unhealthy for us. So very often, when I'm going to talk about what fats and lipids are, whenever we want to go on a diet and we want to lose weight, the first thing we want to do is, A, we've got to cut out all the fats. We never, we can never cut out all the fats and all the lipids. We've got to make sure that we eat them. We've just got to be very careful what we eat and how much we're going to eat of it. Okay, guys, on the board, as you said, there are a lot of keywords that you need to go through. I'm not going to go through all of them. They're going to appear, right, as we go through the PowerPoints. But as I said to you, life science, biology is a language. You've got to be able to use the terms properly, right? You need to be able to speak biologically. So we need to be able to use these terms. We need to be able to understand them. Right, so make sure you go through them, go back over the lesson, check all the words, go to your textbook or go to the notes and make sure that you understand each of these terms properly. Okay, so remember, just a quick recap of where we're going. We're looking at organic molecules, really big. I'm going to go straight to the next one over here so you can remember they are really big molecules, right? They are made up of carbon. And as you can see over here, the last couple of lessons, all right, let me get my beautiful pen going. We have looked at carbohydrates, we have looked at proteins, and today we're going to look at this concept of what a lipid is. Okay, guys, so the most important thing you need to understand is when I say lipids or when I say fats, very often you jump to the thing of what can make me fat. And the first thing you think of is, oh, that's going to be chocolate and it's going to be chips and all of those kind of things. No. When we look at this concept of fats and oils, I want you to go back to things that are natural sources, right? Natural sources is how we can get them. So if you have a look at the board, we're talking about your oils, um, your sunflower oil that you might cook in, your olive oil, you might have coconut oil, there's almond oil, there's 50,000 million oils at the moment that you can buy, all right? I'm talking about your mayonnaise that you might, you like, might you have in your salad, or if you have a salad, you put salad dressing on it. Some of you might love avocado pears, there's lots of oils in that. In nuts, there's, if you crush it, that oil. When you think of that oily, oily, yes, the nuts have got that like oil on it. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about fats and oils. And I'm going to give you, just now, I'm going to tell you what the difference is between the two. So be very careful that you understand examples, right? As I said, a sunflower oil, right? Butter, margarine, all of those are going to have what we call lipids, right, a fat or an oil in it. Okay, so let us start at looking at what a fat is made of. When we looked at carbohydrates, we saw they're made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. When we looked at proteins, the last lesson, we looked at carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, 
And then proteins were a very special group. They had nitrogen, okay? Fats have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So they very, have very similar right, elements to that of which carbohydrates have. Now, when we look at a fat, remember we're looking at this whole concept of what a monomer is. And a monomer, we said, is a building block. Right, one single unit. So we take one building block and we add them together and we add them together and we add them together and we make one big polymer, one big macro molecule. Now when we take a fat, fats are, are very difficult. Not difficult, they, like, they fall into their own category. They are made up of one glycerol, right, and three fatty acids. Now, I say to my kids, three fatty acids, who was fat? I don't know if you remember, right, when you were growing up, you might have heard the story of the three little pigs. All right, what are little pigs? They fat, right, they round. And who were they with? The one big bad wolf. All right, so I always try to remember the three little pigs and the wolf. That makes up, all right, the monomer of a, right, of a lipid. Now I'm going to show you the next diagram. Don't freak out. Don't freak out. This is what a fat molecule looks like. Now remember what I said to you? You don't have to know it. But if I look at it, here's my glycerol. All right, there's my glycerol group. And there, one little pig two little pigs, three little pigs. There's my fatty acid. All right, so that's when we talk about fats. They bonded together. Have a look at the diagram of the top. They joined together. That is actually called an ester bond. They joined together. They won. They were a biggish molecule, but they one molecule. And you see, when you eat of anything like a fat or an oil, when you break it down, you're going to break it down into that molecule. Now, if you have a look at it, it's got lots of carbons and lots of oxygens. And what does that mean? It simply means, you know what? This has got a lot of energy, a lot of energy, far more than glucose, far more than glucose. So this could actually keep you powered for much longer. But as I said, as we're going to see just now, Oopsie, all right, too much of this, unfortunately, has serious effects on how our body absorbs it and takes it in. Okay, guys, this is a very important concept. Now, when we look at the properties of all of these biochemistry, you need to keep in mind we're looking at the properties for further, when we look at things further on in the lessons, all right, when we look at specifically when we look at the heart, all about heart diseases, right, all of those things, when we look at, with the heart, you're going to learn about something called a lymphatic system. A lot of these concepts are going to come back, and you just need to keep them in the back of your mind. I don't know if you guys have ever, all right, if you get your hands full of fat, and you try and put it under water, and it doesn't really work. Because what happens is you try to rub your hand, and it makes these little dots. Very important concept. Look here. Fats do not dissolve in water. Guys, they don't. Fats do not dissolve in water. So when you wash your hands, what do you need to add to it? Soap. When you wash the dishes, what do you need to add to get the fat away? Because it doesn't dissolve in the water. You need to have dishwashing liquid, all right? Sunlight dishwashing liquid that actually breaks the fat and then dissolves it. Now, I wonder if you guys ever, we live in a world where we have to use hand sanitizer all the time because of COVID. And I wonder if you've ever really thought, why must we use hand sanitizer? And the reason we wear Hand sanit well, I have to use hand sanitizer is the following. This is the COVID virus. Imagine it's a circle. And around the virus over here, there's a fat layer. All right, there's a fat layer. Exactly like we're looking at now. But you know what dissolves fat? Alcohol, right? 
fat dissolves in alcohol. So if I've got a virus with a fat layer, and every time I spray my hands, and I might have the virus on my hands, what do I do? The alcohol breaks down the layer of that COVID virus, right? And that actually breaks down the virus, and hopefully we won't be able to spread it all over. Okay, so very important part. Now you guys need to think, I eat some fats, it goes, I digest it, and now I need to take that into my body. But blood is going to carry things. But blood is made up of water. I can't put my fat that I've eaten into blood. So what do I need? I need to have a different system that carries my blood. So you're going to later on in the sessions, we're going to talk about the lymphatic system. And because it doesn't, or fat doesn't dissolve in water, we need to have a different system to transport fat around our body. Okay, so guys, why do we need, all right, why do we need, um, why do we need fat? Very important, let's go through each of them. Okay, these guys, crazy guys, they like to run, right? We need to have a reserve energy. What does that mean? Basically, it means that our first point, our body's going to use glucose, right? That is going to be like the instant source of energy. But if we need to carry on and we need for example, these crazy guys are going to run a marathon. Our glucose doesn't last us. So where does our body go? To our reserve, right? Reserve energy, and that is the fat that we store. Our body doesn't get rid of fats, guys. It just stores it. Okay, second of all, very important, the word insulator. Where do we store the fat? You're going to see later when we look at mammalian tissue. Underneath our skin, we need to have a fat layer. And that's really important. What is an insulator? It keeps us warm. Remember, we've got to keep our body temperature at around about 37 degrees. How do we do that? We need to make sure that we have all these possible means of keeping our body warm. And after this, you know, just probably after the break, we're going to look at these concepts of what vitamins are. And vitamins are also organic nutrients that we need in our diet. And some of the vitamins, we dissolve in the fat. And that simply means that we don't need to have or eat as much of that vitamin all of the time. We store it in our fat. It's there. We don't have to always make sure that we eat these and our body stores them. Okay, so it stores the certain vitamins in our fats. Guys, maybe you've heard of omega-3 and omega-6. And very important, they help us. What is metabolic functioning? That's how our bodies run, right? How we work. So simple things, is our brain functioning, right? Do we have enough energy? Right. So when we talk about oils, it's important for things to, as I said to you, what are we looking at? Biochemistry keeping us healthy. Fats are part of the fish oils, right? That maybe in the tunas and those of you who like sardines and those kind of fishes and pilchards, all of those things have got good oils in them that are really, really healthy, healthy for the development of our brain and how our body is going to function. I hope you start to see how important a varied diet is. Very difficult in our country if unfortunately food, healthy food is expensive and you can't always able to afford it. Okay guys, very important here, okay? We're going to look at the concept after biochemistry, we're going to look at the concept of what a cell is. And our body is made up of these cells. And now what you have is, you have this membrane, so it's a basically this fence, right, that se separates each cell. Imagine each cell next to us. And here, this is called a cell membrane. And the cell membrane, I'm going to show you, you're going to be very familiar with this structure in the next section when we do the cell, is made up, right, of phosphates and lipids. Guys, fats are essential for building our cell membranes. They are a simple unit in our body. It needs fat. You cannot take it out of your diet. You just need to maybe 
eats a little bit less. All right, now also steroids. You know, when you think of steroids, you go maybe back to all these guys who want really big muscles. But gentlemen, your male hormone is testosterone, right? And it's a steroid, and you need fat to be able to build that. Okay, so guys, your reproductive hormone, very important. Okay, these are all steroids. In maybe when you do digestion, you need bile salts. And bile salts is something in your digestive system, funny enough, that's going to actually help you to digest fat. Right, and we're hormone. We need fat for our body to make a hormone. It's called cortisol. And it's our stress hormone. It's how our body handles the stress, right? We actually have a hormone, right, that actually kind of keeps us, I won't say happy, but kind of balanced and we don't go all maniac all of the time. That's the stress hormone. Okay, so just now there's the two things when we come to fats and um, when we talk about what is a fat and what is an oil. Okay, so here is the distinction, a long word coming up. Right, guys, the word is polyunsaturated. And what you don't need to know the biochemistry, it's really not important. Basically, what it is, is if it's an oil, right, it has, it's liquid, right, it's runny. Think about the olive oil, you can squeeze it, right, that kind of oil. So what we say is, if it's a plant, if it's an oil, well, if it's an oil from a plant, we call it an oil, okay? So when we talk about all the plant lipids, we give it an oil. And what will happen is all of them at room temperature, it will be liquid, all right? If you put, take butter out of the fridge or margarine out of the fridge, it's going to melt. It's gonna, even if it's at room temperature, it's going to melt. It's going to go liquid, okay? That's a good thing. That's a good thing. We want that. Liquid, liquid, doesn't get hard. All right, now the next one. Guys, this is the one some of us like. It's the fat we find on meat. I don't know if you guys have, if you cook um, some, some meat and it's got a lot of fat in it. So we cook the meat and then the fat, it goes liquid and then we put the pan and we leave it. And we come back just now a little while and what has happened to the fat it's gone hard right it's gone hard animal fat goes hard now let's take that I eat animal fat what does it do it goes into my blood vessels and it hardens right it hardens when we do the heart you're going to see here Guys, so your blood vessel, this is an artery over here that carries blood. Now, this is the hole where blood goes through. You want it to be open. You want it to be big and open. Now, if we have too much, especially of the fat, right, animal fat that gets hard, look where it gets hard. Because fat at some point, and you'll see later lessons, it does enter the bloodstream especially in the heart. And look at this. It blocks our arteries. It blocks our arteries. And where does it block the arteries? In the heart, right? So the meat, the fat from meat hardens and forms like a hard plaque, right? A hard substance. And we block the arteries. And that is how we can have a heart attack right, when we, the blood can't get to our heart or a, the blood vessel burst and the muscle, the tissues in our heart actually die off. Okay, guys, the last thing we're looking at here, how do we test? Remember, you've got to do a food test. Food test, a lot of my clothes, I think that I cook in at home, I do the food test all the time. Do you have those little stains on some of your t-shirts where you've cooked with fat? That's exactly what the fat test is. So all we do is, right, you take a sample of, you take a fat, and what does fat dissolve in? Alcohol. So I take some, maybe some butter, alcohol, and I shake it up, right? And then I take whatever's in there and I pour it onto maybe a piece of paper. 
Guys, this is water that can evaporate. That's an oil stain. Right, so how do we know that it's got fat in? It's going to give us this lovely greasy spot. As I said, how many of you have got maybe t-shirts at home with those lovely greasy spots on it? Okay, guys, that's all for this section. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Welcome back, Life Sciences. I hope you enjoyed your little break. Did you go and maybe have a look what kind of fats and oils you have in the fridge, right, maybe, or in your counter, or somewhere in your house, right? Did you go and have a peek and see, oh, this is a fat, this is an oil, and which ones are going to be healthy for me? Okay, guys, the next um, section of work is that we're going to look at, they're also organic compounds, and they are vitamins, and they tie up with the lipids. As I said to you, one of the things is some of the lipids dissolve in, well, some of the vitamins dissolve in fats, all right, in the lipids in your body, and that has an effect on how, how often you need to food, um, eat the food, etc. So what we're going to look at now is we're going to look at the vitamins, this is a section like minerals, maybe make a mind map of it, uh, maybe you can do a table, and what you need to for each section is, why is a vitamin important? All right, what kind of foods? Have an idea of what kind of foods they are, and remember we're looking at this concept of a deficiency disease. A deficiency is when you have too little of something. So if I do not get the right vitamins in, what could possibly happen to my body, what, what maybe I could fall sick, maybe I'm unhealthy, what exactly is going to happen. Okay guys, so if we have a look at the groups, as we say to you, some of the vitamins are going to dissolve in fat, and the four vitamins that we are going to look at are vitamins A, D, E, and K. Fat soluble, we don't need to eat as much of it, right? It lasts in our body longer. Then the ones that we don't store. These are going to be vitamin B and vitamin C, and those we're going to need to have to eat more of, replenishing them more often. When I look at B, you see I've put in here the B group. Vitamin B has got at least 16 or so different kinds of vitamins. So when we look at vitamin B, we're just going to look at it as a general, all right? There's a lot of different kinds of vitamin Bs, but we're just going to look at them as a general group. Okay, guys, we're gonna start off with vitamin A, right? And vitamin A is very important for our skin and for our eyes. If you see this picture over here, what happens is, is his eye, the nice, if you, I know you don't, maybe don't like to touch your eye, but if you touch your eye, it's very moist, all right, and it's very soft. And what happens is, if you don't have enough vitamin A, you actually form like a, a hard layer over your eye, right? And remember, it's very important, light needs to get in, and it's like, like having something that blocks there, it's not really important, right? Not really important, it's not really pleasant for, for anybody who's got that condition. Okay, so what we have here, guys, is uh, vitamins are going to assist with the minerals. So if you can see that in here it doesn't say anything about building, right? It keeps the skin, let me get my pen, right? It keeps the skin, and now we're going to need to get a different color, right? It keeps the skin mu and the mucous membranes healthy, right? We need it for the eye. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever felt this. It's called night blindness. And night blindness is simply, you cannot see at night. So during the day, you're fine. But um, in later, maybe in lessons, you're going to learn about the eye. And in the eye, you have a receptor. And what that does is, is that when the sun goes down, you've got vitamin A. And what it does is it, it makes these these things in the back of your eye, you can see better at night. You can't see like a cat and like an owl, but you are able to distinguish between grays and blacks and 
you're right, you won't, you, you can kind of see in the dark. And especially if maybe you're driving and a car's coming on and the lights are in your eyes and afterwards you just can't see, right? For lots of normal people, yes, the light comes in your eyes and as soon as the car passes, you're able to see again, right? But not so with night blindness. Okay, so that literally you, you battle to see at night. So if you're driving a car or something like that, it's not, you're going to cause an accident. Now, if you have a look at the foods, I want you to notice the foods. Anything that has a really bright color. I know maybe your parents told you if you eat carrots, it's gonna be good for you, it really is. Guys, if you have a look at all these bright colors, all the oranges and the greens and the yellows, right? Those are really, really bright colors. Those are filled with vitamin A. And they also have what they call an antioxidant. I don't know if you ever heard of what an antioxidant is, but in our body, we have got cells that, if I could say, they're bad, right? And what they do, what they do is, is they could maybe turn into cancer cells. And antioxidants basically try to fight those bad, bad cells in our body, right, to try and make us healthier. So vitamin A, guys, really important for your eyes. So try and, if possible, right, get some fruit in, something with a nice bright color. Look at your vegetables, um, spinach, broccoli, cauliflower, right, anything with a a color in it, right, a yellow, um, a pepper, or an apple, or something like that, and that is really good, right, for your eyes. Your eyes are really, really important, and you need to get that vitamin A. Okay, guys, the next one is vitamin D, and this, 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 vitamin D we get from the sun. Well, we don't get vitamin D from the sun, but you know what? Go out, going out into the sun is really healthy for us. So we've got to be careful of our skin. But what happens is when the sun hits our skin, there's a whole lot of chemical reactions. And what it does is, it actually, our body, the vitamin D, helps our body to absorb calcium. And let's go back to the minerals. What did I need calcium for? Healthy bones and teeth. All right. Vitamin D helps with the calcium so that my body can absorb calcium to keep my bones right and all of that healthy. So we get it in, all right, sunlight, couple of minutes of sunlight. My right, guys, we're also gonna find it in fish, in yogurt, in milk, in cheese, and in eggs, in margarine. I don't know if you guys, how many of you use, I think it's Sunshine D, all right, the margarine, Sunshine D, right, it's called because it's going to be rich in that vitamin D for us. Now, because it's really important, helps our body with calcium, you can see here, all right, this is rickets. And then you see little old ladies, although anybody can get it, right, that is going to be your osteoporosis. So if you, right, if your body doesn't have enough vitamin D, what do I need vitamin D for? To get the calcium, right? And where does calcium go? Calcium goes to my bones and keeps my bones nice and strong so that it can help me stand. My bones don't crumble weak. And when I get older, right, I don't have arch over like that. Why? Because the bones of my vertebra, my spinal cord, right, my, all those bones in my back are strong. They're not weak and they can keep me upright. Just go into the sun, guys, go into the sun. Much easier way that we can look at it. Right. The next one is vitamin E. Right now, vitamin E, again, it is an antioxidant. And what does it mean? It tries to get all those bad cells out of our body. But also very important, what it helps here, is when we look at, all right, hang on, oh, we're busy touching buttons here. When we have a look, here we go, at this thing called cholesterol. Cholesterol is fat. Right, and what happens is, what do we do, right? We stop, whenever I say to you we've got these arteries and we deposit the fat into the arteries to make it smaller. Vitamin E actually tries to stop that from happening, okay? So it says, listen here guys, all right, let's try not to deposit all the fat there, you see? The deposition, it tries to stop that. So healthy vitamin D, if you have a look, there's nuts, right, broccoli, I hate broccoli, all right, I don't know why, it looks like a tree, 
right, avocado pear, the oils, they're very important. Okay, now for those of you who get to my age, right, we start looking at these concepts. What it does is, if it antioxidants, it keeps you healthy. Because if you're not healthy on the outside, you can look a lot older and unhealthy, all right? So inside, not so good. Also outside, not so good. So vitamin E, you'll see the girls, all right? Girls, go and have a look at all your cream that you use to put on your face. Chances are it's got vitamin E oil in it, all right? Very good for putting on your skin, helping your skin, all right, to rejuvenate, to these antioxidants, to, to all the healthy things to come up and to try and make you look right, much, lot, lot younger, to try to look after yourself, right, to be able to not get all those wrinkles when you are older. Guys, if we don't have enough here, right, it says damaged nerve cells. Now, what you're going to notice when later on you're going to look at nerve cells, and I'm going to draw a diagram you might not be familiar with, your nerve cells looks like this. Now, it's got a long strip. Now, this so, and what it is around here, all right, is fat. Now, have a look here. Damaged cell membranes. What is, sorry, let me do that. They made of fats. There we go. Fats. So, what happens is if we don't have enough, all right, if we don't have enough vitamin D, we can actually stop our body from absorbing some of the good healthy fats, right? And that, remember what fats, what the function is? It builds our cell membranes. And when we get to the nerve cell, a nerve that's gonna send a message from our brain to our body, right, can damage because a nerve cell has got fat around it, right? And that's how we make it so we can send the message. So vitamin E, right, we want to make sure that we have enough of it, right, to get those, the fat to, so our body doesn't, right, we can absorb it and control how much we have. Okay, guys, the next one is vitamin K. Vitamin K, kind of like, also like vitamin D, your body can't, it's kind of like sees to it yourself. Inside, you'll see, that's why I've got this picture over here. Inside your your large intestine, not your small. I want you to have a look at this one over here. You have got a lot and lots of bacteria. All right, you've got a whole colony of bacteria, and they're good, right? They're there for good. They're not there to cause you harm. They've got, they're breaking down a lot of things, right, that your body can't break down, a lot of the food, getting everything in order. They play a very important role in your health. One of the things they do is they actually produce vitamin K. One of the things that the bacteria give off, right, is going to be vitamin K. And that helps with blood clotting, right? So what happens is, is that you don't want to bleed too long because that is going to be a loss of blood. So what you want to do is make sure, right, is that, that if you have a damaged um, artery somewhere inside, if you've got hurt on the outside and a blood vessel has broken, you need to make sure that your blood can clot as soon as you can. And I know K is not a C for clotting, but if you can remember, K for clotting. All right, don't tell your English teacher, I think I'm going to get in trouble if we do that. But it's a way for you to remember. Vitamin K, all right, is going to help you with clotting. And have a look, those of you, I don't like green vegetables, but these I like, some of them, right? These are natural sources of vitamin K. Broccoli, Brussels sprout, apples, lettuce, beans, right? Avocado, right? Spinach, cucumber, green things, right? Lots of these green things are gonna help you, right? With blood clotting, very important. Especially if you don't want sores, you don't want them to, if they don't clot, they'll become infected. Okay, guys, so those are the fat-soluble ones, A, D, E, and K. So we don't need to have too much of that in our diet. You'll see a lot of it, actually things help us, the sun and little things inside of our intestines are going to help us with it, but we do need them in small amounts. So have a look at it, look at what you eat, and maybe just make a, see if you can make a change somewhere. 
stored in our fat. Now the next two groups that we look at, our body doesn't store it. So we are going to have to right, eat foods more that higher in these two groups than we would have in the fat soluble ones. All right, guys, vitamin B group. This is your energy, 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 energy. All right, those of you who like those horrible Red Bulls and those monsters and those energy drinks that are bad for you, no, 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 no. Right, you need to start getting more vitamin B. All right, healthy eating, not all this, these funny monster drinks, etc. Okay, just now probably going to get moaned at. But guys, more natural things. Vitamin B is your energy, right? That's really important. It gives your body that energy to do the things during the day. Now, if you have a look at it, it has enzymes. We looked at enzymes last time. What do enzymes do? They're the biological catalyst. They give your body energy to do the things, all right? ATP, and ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. Don't worry. ATP is energy, right? So your energy foods, your energy foods, that's really important. Look at all the, the nice healthy things there. Have a look at eggs, maybe some legumes, some soya, some fish, some nuts, all the green vegetables all the time. Now have a look, guys. Vitamin B, quite a serious things can happen if you don't have shortage. I don't know about you, this is a common one. I get it when I'm stressed. When you're stressed, your body's, your energy kind of gets sapped. And very often when we don't have a lack of vitamin B, it comes out and signs on our body. I want you to have a look at all of these things. Okay. Ulcers in the mouth, dermatitis, marks on the skin. These are serious. These are some serious diseases, right, called beriberi and pellagra, right? And they actually, look at all, they disfigure you. They, 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 they don't, uh, marks on the skin, right? They have an, an effect on how your brain functions. So vitamin D, vitamin B, sorry, is really, really important. You've got to have it in your diet quite often. As I said to you, you'll notice during exam time, this is what you should be taking, right? It helps your body, your memory to help you think clearly. Those are the kind of things that you need. Then our last vitamin is vitamin C, all right? I love the name, ascorbic acid. Acid, it's bitter. Now, vitamin C, can we look, it helps with your skin. So it goes along with all the vitamin E and the vitamin A. Guys, it helps with your blood vessels. It helps if you absorb iron, all right? We looked at iron when we did nutrients. And vitamin C, all right, is really important. Those of you who put it on your face, Right, it helps you maybe to fight colds and flu during COVID. It might help you right, with all the, to, the keep, to keeping healthy, etc. And what are we going to have? Fresh fruits and vegetables. Oranges, lemons, strawberries, anything that's got a bitter. And believe it or not, actually potatoes have got vitamin C in it. Right, so there's lots of things that you can have. And I don't know if you can remember here, those of you who have lack of vitamin C, Right, your gums get all sore. You don't, you bruise very easily. And you've got all these funny marks on your skin, all right, and doesn't heal properly. Your sores stay open. So vitamin C, really important for you. Okay, guys, we're going to have a quick break and we'll be right back. Welcome back, Life Sciences. As I said to you, we're looking at lipids. I hope you once again just had a go and have a quick squiz what you have in your fridge. Okay, let's start with some questions on this section. All right, guys, let's have a look at this question. Okay, basically, we've got a table. There's three different cereals, cereal A, B, and C. They've got a whole lot of information there, and very important that each pack is 500 grams. All right, it's a box of cereal. Right, so now we've said here that there's a 15-year-old boy, and these are the symptoms that he is showing. His gums are bleeding, his nose is bleeding, and he's got sores on his skin. 
Right, so now if we have a look here, the first question, we're going to ask a purely right, simple one. What are the monomers or the building blocks of fat? Remember, three little pigs and the big bad wolf. So the answer was three fatty acids and the one glycerol. Right, remember we can ask a whole lot of questions, but we, we're concentrating on this fat. Okay, now we had the list of symptoms. He's got bleeding gums, he's got a nosebleed, and he's got sores on the skin. Right, so using the list of symptoms mentioned below, name a deficiency disease that the boy is suffering from. Guys, the nosebleed and the bleeding gums are a big giveaway because that means the blood vessels are not healthy. And what do we need for healthy blood vessels? We need vitamin C. So the chances are he's probably got a bit of scurvy there, you know, where the, the, the everything's, the gums are not so healthy, etc. Okay, so now we're going to have a bit of a, right, what we have, a bit of a, how can I say, an, a calculation question. Now it says, calculate the percentage of vitamin C in cereal B. Now, if you have a look, you've got to go to vitamin C, right, and there is 30. Now, 30 what? Grams, guys, grams. And how many, what, how, what was the mass of the, block, of the box? It was 500 grams. So he's 30 of the 500 is the percentage, right? And it's times by 100 if you want to get the percent. And I did this beforehand, so I don't have this miraculous brain. And your answer should have been six. Six what, okay, percent. So there's six percent of vitamin C in serial number B. Okay, a little bit of a calculation question there. Now you need to decide which cereal, A, B, or C, will be least suitable to the boy, right? So the one that he shouldn't have, give a reason for your answer. He has got scurvy. So we are looking for something with a high, all right? We want him to have something high, which is 60, would be the best. But what does the question say? actually says to him, which one should he not take? And if we have a look here, 35, all right, grams here, and 30 grams of, so we worked out the percentage, this cereal B, he mustn't have. Why? It has too little vitamin C. Right, what do we want? It says here, will be the least suitable, right, not suitable. So this is the one we definitely don't want him, all right, to take. Now we get to this diagram and we have a look at it and it shows us this big thing that we get all scared of, but look what I do. One little pig, two little pig, three little pig. And the question says, all right, this is an organic molecule. So I'm thinking, I know this, there's three, three little pigs, right, one wolf. So I'm looking, I'm thinking, okay, this is going to be a fat molecule. All right. So the question there, what is the name of this organic molecule? Guys, let's go for lipid because that is the term that we use for a whole group, right? Probably your teacher might accept fat and oil. But, all right, that is okay. What are the monomers? Do you notice? All right, the same question again. And that is going to be the three fatty acids. All right, remember the little pigs and the one glycerol. Okay, guys, study time. State two functions of this type of lipid in animals. There was lots. Let's go. We had about five. All right. There was a reserve energy. This is where your studying comes in. This is where you need to know. What did it else did it help do? Right. It helped build our cell membranes. Right. What else did it do? It was underneath our skin. It was an insulator. 
it kept us warm, right? What else? It's a hormone, right, that helps us to do, to keep our stress hormones, etc., and all of that nice and healthy. Okay, guys, those are just a few kind of questions that we can ask on the section. I hope that you, all right, enjoy today's lesson. Go and look in your books. Go and look and see if you can find past papers and do more questions on this section. We will see you again next time. Bye-bye.